Good afternoon and welcome to the road to recovery, the road to freedom. Yes indeed, it is Friday afternoon, it rolls around again. It's always nice to be back in the studio talking to folks. To my friends in the Wairapa and the Kapiti and up around the beautiful Hawke's Bay. It's good to see you all again. Well, I don't really see you, you know what I'm saying. It's nice that you're tuning in. This show today is dedicated to my cousin Terry Fawcett. I went to visit him yesterday and it's the last time I'll ever see Terry because um, he's dying of cancer and, you know, it's hard on us all. It's hard on his family, his kids and oh, everyone, really. They were um, wonderful friends of ours, our next-door neighbour. And, um, you know, I guess people say that I'm offensive or obnoxious or whatever because they just don't get me i think that's what it really is and um i really i hate these sort of things i hate them i hate the the wallowing and pity or self-pity or any of that you know it's 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 sad and it's something that i have no desire to indulge in but i went because i love the kid you know how i say kid he's a, he's a year younger than me and um, he, uh, you know, he's pretty chipper, as good as he could be, I guess. And, um, what I do these days, because I've had so much experience in this now, is I like to, um, give them something good to remember. And I turn the conversation towards his dad, Uncle Murray. And Uncle Murray was a, a sign writer. He was the same age as my dad, and they grew up during the war. So there's an old saying, needs must. All these chaps had to turn their hands to trades because they needed to eat. They needed to support their families. So a lot of these guys, like my dad, was, was you know, he had to leave school at 13 to do a trade and, and a lot of these guys were denied education and denied a path that they were probably destined for and Uncle Murray was a sign writer by trade but Uncle Murray was an artist at heart he was a true artist had he had the opportunity the right backing the opportunities Murray today would be a recognised artist and his work would be hanging in galleries. He was that good. It started in, let me see, 64, 1976. Uncle Murray copied a chocolate box with some watercolours that he had found and it was good. It was real good. But he wasn't satisfied with it because I, I think there might have been a flaw or two that weren't perfect and he'd, he'd done it all by eye worked out <coughs> all the proportions <coughs> and each year Uncle Murray copied another chocolate box and then he started painting and he never did that many works he did a few and they were magnificent you know I've been to a lot of art galleries all over the world I've seen a lot of paintings especially still life Murray was one of those guys that had the eye of an artist. The way he could capture light and shade and shadow, the way things were, the depth and the proportionality was absolutely amazing. So I turned the conversation that way for Terry and we went and looked at one of Uncle Murray's paintings and boy was it beautiful and I think it's such a shame that chaps like Murray were were frustrated artists who never really had an opportunity and that is what I'm kind of getting round to here. When I talk about mental illness, um, I'm talking about all kinds of mental illness on my show, not just depression or just one thing that one experiences through a narrow keyhole. Unfortunately, I've got a few disorders, including obsessive-compulsive disorder. I was just showing Michael a bit of a stamp collection that I've put together, and it, it really is something else. And the point that I make is if, if you are suffering in some way, it's good to have a worthwhile diversion, something that takes your mind off of where you're at, you know, especially with depression, 
it's good to lend yourself towards a useful purpose and create something tangible, whatever that might be. A carving, a sculpture, a painting, make some jewellery, make a present, build a car, whatever it might be that rings your chimes. It is good to focus on something that is, that is tangible and purposeful and useful to give you something to change your focus because what tends to happen when you're suffering from depression you tend to get into this loop the spiral where you just go round and round and round and you you cannot see anything else you are lost in this and it it seems to overwhelm and consume you until your days uh just lying on the couch watching tv and that's it you know, that's it. That's where you are trapped forever and ever and ever, amen, until you do something different. And instead of trying to force yourself to do something that you don't want to do, what I'm saying is find something that you do like to do, something where it keeps you occupied, busy, your, your mind, your hands, and it gets you doing something that you feel positive towards and that rubs off on your attitude all around it's just like having a shower or a nice meal you know dressing yourself up not for others for you so that you can just feel good about yourself one day and one day leads to the next you know that's the way out of of spirals of depression or if, if you suffer from bipolar you find yourself one day you'll be high as a kite you'll be dancing and laughing and carrying on and then you come thundering down and you don't seem to be able to get out of that nosedive i found that's one good way of diverting your attention away to something positive i mean a walk is all very well and good but a walk is a walk. Once it's over, it's over. And are you going to get yourself back up to do it again? Maybe not. I certainly struggled early on getting it going. I could do one thing and I'd think, yeah, right, that's great. And then, boom, down I'd go again. And I couldn't get back up. You know, I just keep falling over, falling over and seem stuck all the time and never able to break out of where you're at. Whereas if you've got some little project on... You can return to it when it suits you, when you're in the mood, you know, and you just go back to it. And you can get lost in it. That's what got me stamp collecting. I'm not really a philatelist. I'm a collector. It could have been butterflies. It could have been any damn thing. It could have been, I don't know, drawing pins. God. The point is that it's something that I can concentrate on. It's It requires focus. It's exacting. It's ongoing. It's all encompassing and consuming you just get lost in that instead of where you were which wasn't such a damn good place so it's nice to be able to do something and then you can look back on it and and, and see some achievement some progress rather than just doing one thing and when that thing is over it's over although of course if you're if you're that way inclined and you want to get fit again, of course you can set yourself targets to walk a little bit further. So, right, I'll go to the top of that hill today. And you can set yourself targets that way if, if, if that's what suits you. You know, you're a physical person and you like the outdoors. And honestly, there's nothing better. I, I actually used to hate, I used to lock myself away when it rained. And now I go and walk in the rain. It's actually good. In many ways, I prefer to walk when it's really windy or when it's really shitty rain because you often see things that you never see otherwise and there's no one else around and you're left with your thoughts and it's just good to get out. Otherwise, I, I, I used to lock myself in my room for literally months I wouldn't go out unless I absolutely had to go out. And the more I did it, the more I isolated myself, the more isolated I wanted to be, the more isolated I became. And, and so it fed on itself for a long time. And like I say, it's not that easy to do one thing like go for a walk and then go and do it again and again and again. If you're not that way inclined, which I wasn't particularly in that frame of mind, it's nice to do something at home that you can concentrate on, build on, go to when it suits you, you can see 
progress, steps, and that's how you get to the top of the mountain, you know. You're not Superman or Supergirl. You don't leap buildings in a single bound. You go up a stair at a time. So it's steps, it's progress, it's it's bit by bit by bit. That's how you get over anything or, or, or achieve or attain anything. So breaking things down is an easier way to go. What tends to happen with people with mental illnesses is they look at the entire thing and it's absolutely overwhelming and there doesn't seem any way out, any way around, over, under, around. No way are you ever going to get past this. It seems impossible and you start hearing yourself say things like impossible, absolute negatives and that's an easy, easy thing to slip into, you know, to shift blame, to start going on about how the world's against me and winds don't like me and all the negativity feeds upon itself and your life just becomes shite. I'm not saying that this is a miracle cure and I'm not saying it's going to suit everybody, but what I'm saying is you often find that one small good thing can lead to another and something that you can build, that you can look at and, and maybe not necessarily be proud of and show everybody. It's not for them, it's for you. So there's that sense of self-satisfaction, that sense of achievement. And it you don't necessarily have to be skilled you just have to start thinking positive. I saw this thing where this lady had collected driftwood and painted it white and put it all round her place and it was like sculpture. It was brilliant. I thought, what a very clever idea. I saw another one where this person had cut the front off old suitcases and made like a wall out of the front of antique suitcases and it looked marvellous. I thought, geez, that's clever. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to cost you money. If you can, um, what, what do they call it? Re recycle anyway. Recycle old, repurpose, that was the word I was looking for. It's a new word they use these days. If you can repurpose something into some clever idea, old farm machinery, make a sculpture out of it, you know, express yourself. It's that expression of what's inside you that leads to a, a healing and a positive path if you are mentally unwell just some little thing that you can do and it's bringing out a positive energy and positive thoughts that can turn around a really really bad situation for you and i found those sort of techniques over the years suit me and some things i'll do and then i'll just go totally away from them for a year or two and pick up something else and i find it it's nice to have different habits lots of different things indoor things outdoor things sometimes i leave them now i want to get back into diving i, I haven't i haven't dived for years and my lungs are shot through too much smoking and stuff but I just love floating in the water and looking at the, the crabs and the sea life and, and the weeds and everything and it takes you away from where you are to a different place just for a little while you get lost in that moment and it's such a cathartic relieving kind of thing to just leave your pain behind for an hour or two and it's nice it's like going on an overseas holiday sometimes. So all of these little things I find, collect rocks, fossils. It doesn't have to cost you money. Just because you've got no money and you're on the rock and roll doesn't mean that you need um, to be powerless. There's all kinds of things you can do that don't necessarily have to cost you money. And honestly, you think about it, right? Every truly good thing in this world every really important thing costs exactly the same amount zero love trust faith friendship honesty reliability trustworthiness you cannot buy a single one of these things it doesn't matter how much money you pay somebody they're not going to give it to you for money they're going to give it to you because you're good and the same from you to others so you know too many people these days are too obsessed with money and possessions and showing off their shiny cars. I'll tell you what, when I see you in a brand new 
however hundred thousand dollar car i feel sad for you i think really you had to go and do that do you think that little of yourself me i got a shitty old car i don't care gets me from a to b that's the purpose of a vehicle showing off to others being that that that, that selfish world that we've indulged in for the last about three generations now where it's all about you you know even the ads they're always brainwashing you oh it's all about you have this have that now 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 don't miss out grab this grab that show off get as much as you can even if you can't fit it in your arms you can carry more on your back you know you can't have enough stuff and you what do you do with it a lot of it just sits around and gathers dust. You know, you get all excited at the time you go out and buy the latest flip phone for 1,500 notes or something, and I just think, you loser. <laughs> really. You know, um, money is not the answer. And if you think that because you're poor, you're somehow less, well, you're not, you know. I'm not saying that, you know, it doesn't help. Enough to cover the bills and, and, and a decent bit of grub is, is a good thing. You know, I'm, I'm not suggesting that everyone become Buddhist monks and sit and contemplate their navels all day. We all need a bit. But we take this thing far too far, far too far. There's too much self-indulgence and thoughtlessness. And my whole show, talking about mental health, suffering from mental health issues really comes down to, you know, how well we recover, how many recover, how well we live our lives, all depends on you, society. Instead of saying it's not my problem, just become part of the solution. Because if you're not, you are, you are part of the problem. You know, people who turn their backs and walk away and say, why should I care? Oh, you want to think again about that, I suggest. It is important that we look after each other. How we behave towards each other is the society that we grow up in and that which we give to our children. And, and we are the leaders. We are the heroes. We are the ones that they look up to. Not, not Donald Trump. They'll never meet the chap. They'll never know that man. Children gain almost everything they have from their parents. So, you know, if you're a shitty mum or dad, Guess what's going to happen to your kid? It really is that simple, and so it extends throughout society. The better we treat each other, the better our society is to live in. I think this is a shitty country to live in because there's too many corrupt people who think that the law doesn't apply to them and they can just get away with doing anything, throw crap over people's fences and just be nasty towards each other. So I'm part of this wave that's saying, well, hang on. What about we try something different and just do something, even though you don't have to do it. Just do something decent for somebody else. And that's how we get over this crisis. They talk about a climate crisis, mate. We've got a, close, we've got a crisis far closer to home. There's, there's people killing themselves because they're so, so down. There's an enormous number of people suffering from mental health issues with this COVID-19 crap going on. You know... Kids are, are uncertain and, and, and afraid. I heard the other day people are starting to stockpile money now. There is a lot of anxiety in society that is bubbling under the surface. And if we can all stick together as a people, as a community, this is how I suggest we're going to get beyond that into a better place for our kids, for ourselves, is... Things like radio stations, communal radio stations, who do who do work for society, they're not about selling you KFC or McDonald's or windows or swimming pools or any other damn thing. It's people who do this sort of job do so for the love, for the mahi. You know, the mahi, the work for the people is what they're all about. Putting in those yards because they believe in what they do, and often. That can be a, a thankless task. Michael and Veronica here, you know, they, they work really, really hard, cap in hand, trying to get money to keep this thing going, but it's not for themselves. They could walk out tomorrow and get a job just about anywhere and, and probably double, triple the money, but it's not what they're about. 
that's not what the community radios are about. And I, I would suggest to you that that's where it should really be because you find out what's going on. You can support local businesses, local musicians, for example, and, um, you know, make your society a more interesting place. If everyone's just in it for themselves, then it's, it's a pretty boring, dull, horrible place to live. Whereas... If you get a bit more involved in your community in whatever way it might be, you know, if you see something on, just go and support it. And it makes all the difference to the people who have put in so much hard work to make this happen. You know, indulging in the internet and things going on overseas, I know, I know, I was young once too, and we're always looking out, you know, to the stars, to the world outside and everything that's going on around us, but What's happening right here in your little old town is what's going to affect you most directly. And if you get involved to some degree, join a bowling club or a darts team or whatever and get a little bit more involved with folks around town. You know, I look at folks that have lived here in Masterton, which is where the show is done. Uh, folks like my friend Keith Archie, he's uh, manager's um rentals here he's a good fellow and he's lived here a long time and he's well known in the community and it's good to see how these people treat each other it's, it's lovely to see them interact in the way they do very helpful and everything towards each other but unfortunately that's a small click of people that have lived here for a long time and i find the same thing in my town there's very much an us and them attitude if you're not a local you're not one of us and if you're not one of us then you're on the outside and this this attitude these barriers that we build between people is what i try and break down with my show and get people just to think about being a little bit more open-minded and, and get a little bit more involved in the community and you know the mental health of everybody improves if, if they they like the place that they live if there is not this negative feeling certainly our town got very run down and when it did kids just started going around the town just kicking the shit out of everything they kicked my alleyway door clean off its hinges one night because they feel bad about their town and, and so they start turning on it and destroying it and everyone gets this whole negativity feeding upon itself people burning car wrecks down at the river and turning the place into a tip disrespecting their own home but you do the town up you make it look nice and everyone's attitude changes and the community becomes a good place to live in because of people's attitude and that's all it comes down to simply attitude it's not about money and or, or anything else it's just about you know, realising that this community is all you've got and if you hate it, well, maybe it's got more to do with you and the way you're feeling and your attitudes than the place itself because just about every place I've ever lived in, there's lots of good stuff to be seen, to be discovered. Often unknown things um, that are right there at your doorstep and once you get involved in it, you think, wow, why didn't I do this ages ago? And your attitude changes, and, and, and so it has a knock-on effect, a ripple effect all around. And when you're dealing with people who are down, it's amazing what a kind word or a smile can do. It's worth more than any money. So what I'm saying is it's not about how much money you throw at solving a problem, it's about how much you actually do, and that doesn't have to cost a lot. You know, it's it's not all about difficult solutions. Sometimes it's the simplest things that make the biggest difference, and I, I found that a lot. It took me a long, long time to learn that. You know, I was always searching for the big solution, for the one-hit wonder thing that was going to solve all my worries. Win lotto, you know, buy a lotto ticket. You know, I'm way beyond that. I don't need no lotto ticket, and I don't need a million dollars. It wouldn't serve any purpose now. All I need is, is a few decent friends around me, and that has really, really, really helped me over the years. It's just a few decent people. I didn't need many. You know, just one or two. And it was very difficult in the early days because mental health was not a big issue and people kind of struggled to even understand and didn't really want to talk about it. It was a taboo subject and there was shame in it and, you know, to call somebody mad was an insult and 
there's all this negativity around it, and I found that that's very much shifted, um, thanks to, you know, a few people, John Kerwin, Mike King, Stan Walker, guys like that, you know, uh, influencers, they call them, people who make a big difference and, and help the sea change. There's a big shift in the community of attitudes towards something. And the negative attitudes... When you look at them, you think, why on earth did people feel that way about it? You know, well, why was mental illness considered a weakness? Like, you know, you're somehow pathetic or you can't handle it. You know, they used to always say, oh, hard nut, son. You don't hear people say that anymore. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you just have to bite the bullet. It's true. But a lot of the times, there's a better way of going about things than just pushing yourself until you collapse. And, you know, I was. Um, watching this guy on one of the farmers about how he'd just driven himself to the brink and a lot of people in the farming communities when the work is on it's hellishly hard and the hours are severely long they're isolated and they're pushing themselves so you know a phone call is a really really good thing just to have a little chat you know just a bit of encouragement and reassurance and just making sure that if you do have people in your wider family who, who are working the land, that you just keep in touch with them when they're really busy. Just a little chat to say, you know, how you doing, are you all right? And just keep an eye on them because, you know, when you're working alone on the farm, the work has to be done. It doesn't go away. And you've got to drive yourself so hard. Um, you know, it, it can affect people very badly. And you can make a big difference just by keeping in touch. Right, we've got to check the time. That's us for another day. Just like that, half an hour over. You wouldn't believe it, but it's done. Thank you very much to Wairapa TV, to all of our sponsors here, New Zealand On Air and, and all the other trusts and everyone who helps us. This is a not-for-profit organisation, so if you know anyone who wants to support us, get in touch with Michael or Veronica, Michael the manager and, or Veronica here, and um, these shows are awfully cheap, but community radio stations always struggle for money so if you can support them keep them going um it's a very worthwhile thing so any support we could receive will be very much appreciated um so thanks for everyone and we'll catch you again next week in the meantime try and do something good for someone this week and be mighty good i'd appreciate that we'll catch you next week bye for now